Yeah, hello everybody. I was chatting with a friend recently and he indicated that he'd be interested in some of my basic Active Directory ADFS and AD Connect monitoring scripts. First out, I want to introduce, if you're not familiar with the PowerShell send mail message command, it's been around for quite a while. It's a great way to send mail messages from PowerShell scripts. Made it a lot easier than uh, we used to have to do in the old days. So you got your from parameter, subject parameter to attachments, and you can see I'm sending several attachments that are going to make up my twice daily Active Directory health reporting routine. Then there's the body of the message. And of course you need your own valid SMTP server that's going to accept your email message and relay it along to the intended recipient. I find that reviewing these Active Directory reports on a twice daily basis really keeps you on top of your environment. If there's problems, they're going to show up here most likely. So if you're monitoring and reporting on Active Directory from a remote workstation, you're going to want to install the uh, RSAT tools for Active Directory. So now that we got the send mail out of the way, we're going to look at the repadmin command. Yeah, I'm sure you're very familiar with it. And you might even be familiar with this one. Basically, repadmin show repl asterisk, which means all domain controllers, and you're going to export it to CSV and it's going to come out in the name of this CSV file. So this is really going to query the repadmin status of each domain controller and each partition that that domain controller replicates. So when you look at this, the first thing you want to do is sort by the last success date, that second to the last column, because sometimes you'll have a domain controller that's pinging and, well, you see that it hasn't replicated in a period of time that's reasonable within the period of time that it should replicate in. And uh, that indicates that the server's locked up and it's probably not performing other vital active directory duties. This doesn't happen very often, but when it does, it'll show up when you sort oldest to newest and see something hasn't replicated in a couple, three, four hours. Uh, the last column is the error column, and what you want to do is filter out all zeros. You'll see all of the other replication errors in that column, and look out for the dreaded 8451, which indicates a database error. So next, we're going to look at DFSR, or the SysVol replication health. And again here, monitoring from a remote workstation, you're going to want to install the RSAT tools for... Uh, DFSR underneath uh, file server tools. Okay, so here we're going to use the DFSR admin command and the first command prop test clean cleans out the old test file from the sysvol folder. Basically when we're doing this we're generating basically a dummy file and then later on we're going to check the propagation by seeing if that dummy file is present on each and every server. So then this prop test generates the new dummy file. Now the mem name is, this is the reference member. Usually you want to use the PDC as a reference member. Uh, and again, we're specifying the sysvol share. And also as part of this, we're going to kick off the DFSR admin health report. So this is going to generate a second report. When we kick off this prop test and send that file out, you have to allow time for that to replicate and it should be at least as long, if not less, than your AD replication that you can gauge from the RepidMin, looking at the oldest uh, server on the RepidMin report and the newest server on the RepidMin report. It tells you how long it takes for you to replicate all of Active Directory. Well, DFSR should replicate within that period of time or less. Okay, so here's the DFS replication health report. And right at the top, you can see the number of servers involved. You can see if there's any errors, servers that are offline, unavailable for, for reporting, and servers with DFS replication warnings. Uh, it's a very small environment with just two domain controllers, so I wouldn't expect any problems. And as you can see, we got what we expected. You can also drill down into the details of the individual servers. 
and see more information about free space and the amount of space uh, saved from the DFS replication. So there's a lot of information here, but the good news is all at the top. Okay, we've waited the requisite amount of time, so now it's safe to gather up our prop rep report. And we're going to take a look at that. So we run this one that collects the report of how long it took to propagate DFSR changes. And the winner is looking pretty good. Again, here you get errors, propagation tests incomplete, details about the particular test. This graph is really cool. Of course, I only have two servers, but when you have multiple servers, you have a nice curve showing... Wow, a bunch of servers close by got it real fast, and the servers far away got it really slow. Took one member one second. The replication was completed in one second, 100%. And the member servers are listed, and how long it took for each of them to receive that replication. Okay, so with this information in hand from AD replication using RapidMin, and DFSR replication of the sysvol shared volume using the DFSR admin command, you'll have an awful lot of information to help you keep your Active Directory environment healthy. You'll even get information about failing hardware indirectly, like a database failure or uh, DFSR fails to replicate. It'll show up in the local event logs as hardware issues uh, disk failure issues, etc. So if you pay close attention to this on a regular basis, you're going to be able to maintain a healthy environment. Thank you very much.